Let's talk about. Um, so you have an interesting story based upon Joey Morella. Now, let me let me let you know that I'm a big Joey Morella fan. The first time I noticed him as a high-profile referee was 1987 WrestleMania. You know who his dad is? Morella Monsoon. Really? I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know. That. When Joey got killed, God bless him. Uh, Morella was never the same. After you lose a son or a child or something, you're never the same. But mm -hmm. it really took its toll on uh, on Gorilla and I miss Joey. Yeah, you know, the story about that is uh, we were doing TVs with WWF. This was back in '92, '93. Mm -hmm. uh, that usually at the end of the night. After TVs, the referees would have to stay till the end of the show because right. we're the referees. Right. So we'd all usually ride together, me, Joey Marilla, and a couple other referees or whatever. But uh, so we did three TVs and we were Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Monday was live, Tuesday was the taping, which would show the next Monday, and the third TV was Wednesday, which showed the following. Uh, week and then every three weeks we'd do TV, three TVs. So mm -hmm. one would be live, two would be on Memorex tape. Okay. Uh, but now it's live every night. But you know, they were just getting their stuff together. Did you know that I did the first Monday Night Raw? No, I did not. Yeah. That's when it was in the Civic Manhattan Civic Center? Yeah. Oh, nice. It was the first Monday Night Raw. Uh, what was the first? What was the match that you that you? I don't for, remember you know, exactly, <laughs> but I know I did a title switch. I think it was uh, um, Heartbreak Kid against his partner. Oh, Marty Janetti. Marty Janetti, and uh, they put the belt. The Intercontinental. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and it was on Monday Night TV. Oh wow! I I'm free the match. I'm gonna check it out on yeah, YouTube. Check it out. I remember uh, the match, but that might not have been the first Monday Night. Raw, it might have been the second or third, but I did the first one. Mm -hmm. I was on it refereeing. It just happened to be there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so uh, the rest would ride together, and after three days of TV, you're tired. We were driving. We did all three TVs in the New York area, say uh, Poughkeepsie, uh, um, wherever. But anyway, we were driving back. I mean, they were driving back. I had just left like two months before, or else I would have been in the car. Harvey Whippleman was driving, Joe Morella, and I don't know who else was in the car, but uh, I would have been in that car. Okay. Chances are, because referees travel together after TVs. Wow. We're all going back, you know, like a three hour drive back to Newark and then fly home, hmm. or fly to the West Coast and do the rest of the shows. But, uh, and then, you know, unfortunately, they had a wreck and the car flipped and Joey got killed and it broke my heart when I heard and I said wow I, I should have been in that car but you know I had finished up and I was already almost in ECW at that time but it was a heartbreak man. Oh wow and Harvey Wickleman didn't get hurt at all. Not a scratch on him. I mean Harvey's a nice, Harvey right. Wickleman's a nice kid, nice guy, right. good guy but uh, you know one of those things man. Yeah. Right here, right here. And, and um Gonzalez, as far as Giant Gonzalez, I know you did a you did a, what was it WrestleMania at Caesar's Palace? Yeah, WrestleMania nine. WrestleMania nine. Now how was how was dealing? I know you you was telling me some stories about that you traveled up and down the road with him. Yeah, I was this person who was just for person. three years in WCW and then in uh, WWF. Oh, he had to have an assistant with him at twenty four hours a day. You know, he was a giant. Wow. I mean, he, I was eight foot tall. I'm sure they had to customize vehicles for him. Well, the only vehicle that we could rent from Avis or any rent a car place would be a Cadillac. He would almost, even his knees were, you know, like this in a Cadillac, but the Cadillac was the best yeah, for uh, car for him. Better than the van, better than anything but Cadillac. So it was just me and him. Traveled around the world for three years, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I got paid to do it. They didn't have to pay me, actually, but they did. Uh, because we became terrific friends. We became super friends, you know. And what, when did he, when did, um, what was Gonzalez doing as far as before he started wrestling? Because I know he you guys. He played pro basketball. 
I, I'm not how, surprised. How we got here was he was playing European basketball, and uh, Ted Turner owned the uh, Atlanta Hawks. Oh, okay. So he had some scouts looking at the European teams over in Europe, and he seen this giant. He said, wow, look at this guy, eight foot tall. I want to bring him over and play for the Hawks, for Atlanta Hawks. So they brought him over, paid him, uh, but he had already been playing basketball for several years, so he was, his knees were already starting to go and stuff. And he was a hell of an athlete on the court, not much of a performer in the ring. He wasn't a natural. It was right. hard for him to right. be in the wrestling thing because he had never heard of it, never seen it. But anyway, uh, why he couldn't play for the Atlanta Hawks, even though they um, had him for a year, training him and with a nutritionist to get him in shape and all that he couldn't play enough time enough uh in the atlanta hawks for to be worth it you know he could play for three minutes and then it, you know started slowing down you got to play for you know the whole right, game right, 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 right so they told him well uh, unfortunately after training you for a year and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on him to get him in shape to not that he was out of shape but his knees and all that to get him in shape to play for the Hawks unfortunately we can't use you because you can't meet our time requirement we need you at least to play 18 minutes during the game but right. you can only play four or whatever at full strength but Ted Turner owns this wrestling company we're gonna make you a wrestler he said, wrestler? What's that? Uh, I'm not interested. And he flew home. <laughs> he flew back to Argentina. and said, So they called him at home and said, look, we're going to train you to be a wrestler. We're going to pay you a couple hundred thousand dollars to train you and now, this and that. Now, question, was that offer bigger than what he was getting in, in professional wrestling? Or, or he wasn't yeah. even, no, he wasn't. He was out of basketball. He was out of basketball. But, but the price... Where was he making more money, would you say, as far as in pro wrestling? Or wrestling, okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, far more money. Okay. His contract would go up, you know, the first year, signed a three-year deal for Ted Turner. First year, I'm just throwing numbers out there. First year, 250, next year, 350, next year, 450. Right. So, uh, um, so he said, okay, I'll come over, and they trained him and everything, and they used him in wrestling, but he had to have an assistant, and they picked me to be assistant. Assistant, so we turned out good for me. Turned, yeah, you, you get a chance to find out a lot so about I was each other. Good money working for Turner. I had brand new Cadillac every day, state of the art, brand new Cadillac every day, paid for, and making money and having a good time, refereeing and taking care of the giant. So, like at three o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna get a phone call. We never shared a room because we'd travel in the car together, mm -hmm. but you know, I was making enough money to get my own. So, we'd always stay at the Marriott, somewhere nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he'd call me up sometimes, not all the time, but, hey Fonzie, can you do me a favor? I'm sleeping. Yeah, brother, what? <laughs> can you go get me a couple of hamburgers? I'm hungry, I can't sleep. Oh, okay, no problem, there's a Whataburger right across the street. We're in California, or a in and out Burger or whatever. Mm. So I'd hang up, I'd go get the three burgers for him and bring him to his room. Oh, thanks Fonzie, boom, go back to my room, go to sleep. Simple, little things like that, but you know, we became good friends. It was a joy to be around the largest athlete on the planet at wow. that time. Wow, wow, wow. And how, how about um, Bret Hart's? What some stories do you have on Bret Hitman Hart? Well, Bret the Hitman Hart, I worked with him. The best there ever was, the best there ever will be, and all that. Mm -hmm. I, I like Bret Hart. He's always been nice to me, a good mm -hmm. guy. I felt so bad when his brother got killed. Yeah. Man, broke everybody's heart, including mine. Uh, uh, we didn't do much traveling together, but we rode together a little bit. Mm -hmm. I give you for one one night. I remember traveling with them. Uh, they just had the L.A. riots from Rodney King. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. They had the L.A. riots where they burned down Compton mm -hmm. or wherever the hell Watts they, or whatever. I think they was bringing in the national. I think they did bring in the National Guard. Yeah. That. yeah. So we had a show right after the riots at the L.A. Forum. Mm -hmm. So as we were flying in Los Angeles, we were, I was sitting looking out the window and I could still see buildings smoking. 
you know, from the fact that they burned down the buildings and all kinds oh, of shit, wow. the riots and all that. And uh, I was like, damn, well, was, it's different when you see it on TV than, than you see it in person. But so we get to the LA arena and they, I think they told Vince to cancel the show, but Vince said, no, I'm not going to cancel the show. I got, you know, 5,000 people who are paying their tickets. They want to see us wrestle. Uh, so we did the show and I rode with Brett and his brother uh, after the show back to the hotel and this was the, the police's vice as we were walking to the rental car after the show at the LA arena uh, the round one where, where fucking uh, uh, all the superstars played from you know the Lakers uh, and the cop said whatever you do don't stop from here, from the LA arena, I mean from the Los Angeles form, the form, don't stop and get your beer and sodas and all that. Just go from here straight to the hotel because still there's things going on. So I said, okay, thank you, officer, and me and Red Hart. And so what does Red Hart do? We're Half a mile from the building, we stop at the first store we see. We go in there, you know what I mean? And there's all kind of people, white, black, but there's tension, you know? Mm -hmm. But luckily enough that Brett was recognized, hey, the hitman! So we were over, so we had no problem, Oof. you know what I mean? The brothers were glad to see us, you Yeah, know? she was bridging the gap there at the yeah. right time. <laughs> so it was all good. So that was one story, but great guy, great yeah. guy. He comes from a legendary family, too. And Owen Hart. Any dealings with, with Owen Hart? Owen Hart was funny. Uh -huh. He was always doing gangs and telling jokes. and uh, I didn't write because th th they rode together a lot, mm -hmm. him and his brother. But uh, Owen was a great guy. He was a trickster, a prankster a little bit, but a good prank. It's not prank. nothing where it hurts you, but, you know, a nice guy. Gotcha, gotcha. And he had several kids too. When he when he passed, he left his wife and kids. Man, it was a tragedy. How many? How many kids? He... I'm not sure, okay. but more than a couple. Right, 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 right. Oh wow, yeah, that was actually something when they when that pay per view. Yeah, was playing like... Vince says that was the hardest decision he ever made to continue the show. You know, Owen Hart's dying mm -hmm. or dead, and you know, they're working on him. Or continue the show when you continue the show. And I'm sure that I've, I've heard some of the boys speak about it that the atmosphere in there was unbelievable, like to actually having to continue the, the job. Especially right, but it was, it, I think it was okay. It, it would have been okay either way. Right. But he didn't want to. I think if he would have stopped the show, I think people would have panicked and it would have been worse. And you, know? you would have had some. I mean, at the end of the day, business is business, but you would have had fans that wouldn't have understood the situation and started asking, oh, I want my refund. I well, that would have been no problem. Vince would have given a refund. Yeah. Vince don't care about money. Right. Here's a story about Vince mm -hmm. not caring about money. <laughs> so, you know Steve Austin, right? Uh-huh. So, uh, he was fighting some guy, wrestling some guy, he had an angle with him, and so Steve Austin used to come to the ring in a big four-wheel monster truck or something, or you know, do all this thing, and and uh, he told the one of the agents, go buy a brand new Cadillac, because I want Steve Austin to run it over with his monster truck, and it belongs to the guy he's wrestling, the heel. I right? think it was The Rock. I could have been. I think it was The Rock, as a matter of fact. Right. That sounds very familiar. So. So the agent goes to Cadillac dealer mm -hmm. and buys a brand new, whatever year it was, say it was 93 yeah. or 94. Right. So he goes out and buys a brand new Cadillac and he comes back to the arena and, and he says, Vince says, did you buy the Cadillac? Oh yeah, but I got a good deal. I bought the Cadillac that belonged to one of the salesmen and it had a couple thousand miles on it, but it was a brand new 2000, you know, whatever year it was, but I got a deal on it, you know, I say $5,000. Vince said, take it back. I said, I want a brand new Cadillac, not a used one. Oh my God. You know? 
So he had to take it back and got one with 20 miles on it. Oh, and then they man. ran that motherfucker right For over. For something that was about to be destroyed. He didn't give a fuck about money, so he gave everybody back in L.A. money. And it, you know? Got you. Vince, yeah. Vince was the man. He was cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, what are some of your feelings about um, how, as far as some of the workers that have issues with with um, Vince in the past? Have you ever had issues with Vince? As no, far as of course any? not. I think the guys who had issues with Vince were guys who either got fired or had a drug problem right. or wasn't being used to their liking or wanted bigger pay or here's a for instance. Uh, Vince had this formula, I'm not exactly sure, I'm just speaking what I know, you know. Right. But Vince had a formula, uh, and Vince, if I'm wrong, call me up and tell me, so I don't tell the story again. Vince had a formula, like, if, okay, he, and th this is what happened, it was the boss man, remember the boss man? You, Big, wait. Um, as far as he was a wrestler, the boss. Oh man yeah, 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 yeah. With, like, yeah. The yes, 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 yeah, big boss man. Yes, okay. yes, yes. And he was gonna wrestle a guy named Nails. Came out in the orange jumpsuit. Right, right, right. right? And it was a pay per view. Uh -huh. So, so yeah. they both got their checks after and yeah. save. And the boss man made ten thousand dollars for the match, uh -huh. and the other guy made three thousand dollars. Right. So. The other guy, uh, Nails, in the orange jumpsuit, got mad and said, Hey, Vince, why'd you pay him three thousand, five thousand, and only pay me three? <laughs> you know, I was in the same match with him. We should have got equal pay. Right, right. Well, here's my explanation. The boss man has been here seven years. The boss man earns... He earned his... his up, right. Right, and you're new, and that's how my thing goes, you right. know? Once you're here seven years, I'm gonna pay you and yeah. pay the guy you're working with a little less if he hasn't been here. So it's, I guess is that part of the time? Oh well, no, the time honor tradition that he speaks about is when you're leaving the company and you have to do the honors as far as putting people over. Is that part, or so, there's more to it than the time? More to it than that, more. but that was a for instance why okay. Vince don't give a fuck about money. But, but anyway, um, that's. How, that's how it worked, and, and the right. guy got mad at Vince. That's how people get mad and talk shit about Vince. Right. He had no, no reason to talk bad about Vince. Why would you talk bad? Why would you talk bad? You're making three thousand dollars for eight minutes in a match. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know. You complaining? And it made sense. Boss Man was already established and a figure and had action figures and all that shit. And you know, and Nails was just a new guy in the company, so. Well, everybody, you know? everybody wants to come into the business and start straight from the top and don't realize yeah, that you guys. Me too, but I yeah. did. I, <laughs> I was getting cokes for Harley Race and you know hot dogs for Abdul the Butcher. That was you, my job. You got to go through channels. <laughs> yeah, I pay my dues, baby. Thirty years later, here I am. You're right, yeah, man, and still going strong, man. So I mean, and clean too, baby. There you I'm go. Clean. There you go. There you go, my man. I've oh. been the happiest because. Uh, uh, on the road, alcohol is socially accepted. Mm -hmm. And not that they encourage you to drink, but what do you do after the matches? You all right, you get on the matches at eleven o'clock, you take a shower, you go to the hotel room, you go right to the bar and you mm -hmm. have a couple of beers. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, after a year doing it, you have four beers and five beers and six beers and seven beers because you build your tolerance up. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, I'm drinking 18 beers, you know, I said, wow, boy, that wasn't cool. Well, so, once, you to... I, once I got off of that, it was aging me and I was having a problem, so uh, Vince was kind enough to uh, send me to Betty Ford and... Oh, wow, didn't know that. Oh, yeah, he paid. He paid it. He's, he's done that. Now, let me ask you something. If you don't want to answer, you don't have to answer. Is that something he does for certain... Of, of the of the boys as far as in the business I think or he, he has a the... program okay. as a drug uh, policy is a program that if he had ever worked with Vince and had a contract with him if you have a problem with alcohol or drugs he would help you out in some capacity either send you to rehab and pay for it or he, he would help you out for sure 
Because I'll get a letter every year. Hey, dear Fonzie, dear William Alfonso of WWF, and I will hope you're doing fine, but if you have a... Because a lot of guys were dying from accidental overdoses and right. uh, suicides and all kind of stuff, but it's hard transitioning from the road after being on the road to a normal life. It's hard, but... I was once told, I was once told it's like when the boys are constantly used to being on the road and then it's like when they get home to their families, it's like they start realizing that they're two different people. Like even the family members, like they, you, you have the yeah. the life that you're living on the road, then you have the life it's that hard, you're living. It's hard to yeah. change the change, but n now Vince has hired people to help you make the change. And he's got financial advisors and family advisors oh, and good. all kind of things. But back in the day, you didn't. You didn't. There, there wasn't. You're on your own. It was, you know, you're an independent contractor, but. Uh, but Vince was kind enough to send me to Betty Ford, and I've been clean off of drugs and alcohol uh, for almost four years. Oh, nice. 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 Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Well, now let me ask saved you. Saved my life. Been saved my life. Yeah? Oh, wow. Yeah. Is, I've heard a couple of stories, even um, with Ric Flair. Ric Flair, he mentioned it on the podcast, so I don't think there's any secret to that. But Ric Flair also said that Vince McMahon also paid off one of his debts. He he owed like a couple of I think it was thirty, forty, or forty-five thousand dollars, and Vince McMahon actually loaned him the money. And then he said the saddest thing is the biggest payday that he ever had. I, I think he, Vince loaned him more money than that, but the biggest payday that Ric Flair ever had, he had to give it all back because that was pretty much the money that. And it was, this was WrestleMania. I think it was against Shawn Michaels. His last match, and he had to give it all back because that's the money that he you owed know, Vince. And I was like, "Well, I mean, yeah. it happens. That's part of." The hey, thing. but Vince got him out of a jam. Yeah, like, exactly, you know? exactly, exactly, exactly. So pay it back. You got to pay back the bank. Yeah, the thing is, people only like you only hear the one side. The uh, Vince. Yeah, so that's why people talk bad about Vince. Right. There's the guys, the assholes that you know complain. Like I was telling you about right. uh, Bossman making five grand and uh, Nails making three. Right. So Nails complained. That's the only guys that talk bad. Other than that, uh, people talk good about Vince because Vince is Vince. Vince is, right. takes care of his people. I love working for Vince. He treated me like a king, man. I was Bill Alfonso, and I used to get compliments from Vince once in a while. Fonzie, nice bump. Oh, wow. Oh, Fonzie, you dress nice. Good. Nice. Uh, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, I did my job, and I did it well. I worked hard. So, And he recognized that. So I was... I was patted on the back mm -hmm. once in a while. It makes you feel good. It makes you want to work harder. Like I was telling you, you give the guy an extra 20 bucks. Right, right. Go get a steak. Right, You yep, know what I mean? Yep, yep, uh, yep. It makes you work better. When, yep. I, when Vince patted me on the back, said, oh, Fonzie, what a nice bump you took. When Bam Bam threw you across the room and he flew into the garbage cans. You know, I flew <laughs> like a bullet. Boom, bam. <laughs> so, it was all good, man. I don't got a word, bad word to say about Vince, That's man. Bad. He would... I'm not kissing his ass because I want a job or anything. But they, it's just a fact. They Vince also said, good. and to, to his credit, they also said that he doesn't really, and maybe you could and answer that question, way. he really doesn't like the positive things to come out on him as far as because he doesn't want people to know too much that he does nice things for people. Like he's There's an image I guess he's trying to maintain. Like I guess not a mean person, but sort yeah. of like a business stern well, maybe. In, maybe. individual. Maybe. That's probably true. Yeah, because even Ric Flair, when he was saying the story of Ric Flair, was like, oh, he's helped a lot of people out. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's that's something. That's very that's something. Um, another question I wanted to ask you now, dealing with Taz, in, what are some of the stories or memorable stories you have with dealing with Taz? As far as, I know he has his podcast thing. Well, Taz, uh, I was fortunate enough to get hooked up with Taz and be his manager in 96 or 97, whatever year it was in ECW. And we learned together how to be superstars in ECW, which was very cool, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, okay, okay. So that was great to be with Taz in the ring mm -hmm. and, and getting over and getting over and getting over and higher and higher and higher. Well, what was your thought? Great. What was your, what was your thought about the matches that um, Bam Bam and Taz had? They were great matches. Was, yeah, 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 great. Yeah. yeah, Bam Bam was a good friend of mine. The memorable one is when they fell right through. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that was in Asbury Park. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, 
those are some good ones. And and Paulie, any th- were you? I I I know you was there. I seen on a documentary, a wrestling documentary that Paulie was giving a motivational speech. Was that a was that a religious thing that he always did like no, before every big event? No, it was thing. It was a, a good karma thing, and it helped build your enthusiasticness up for the show. But he did know? that. He did that religiously, like before yeah. every show, or okay. Yeah, uh, every pay per view. Every pay per view. That's what for I sure. Okay. You know, all of them do that. Everybody, all the promoters do that. I think Vince, uh, you know, has one of his guys give you a little pep talk. Uh, pep talk, yeah. It's okay. good. It's good for human moment. nature. You know, mm-hmm. you get a pep talk. Hey, guys, okay, this is our chance to shine. And mm-hmm. boom, 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 it makes people feel good. And okay, good job, Fonzie. You did this last time. Let's see if we can do better. Or we want this. We want that. Oh, all good. It's all positive. Energy. Know? Power of suggestion is always good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Rob Van Dam. I was listening to the podcast with, with Rob Van Dam and Stone Cold Steve Austin. That was something. <clears throat> the man has some very interesting philosophy, should I say point of view have any of those philosophies and ways rubbed off on you rvd rvd yeah, yeah about, 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 <laughs> any about, stories uh, yeah well I just did. i i said uh, i was talking to you last night with the vibes good, yes the good vibe yeah i believe in good and bad i'm on the good side i don't have time for negative stuff look i'm 60 years old almost august 11th i got the same birthday as hulk hogan wow and my birthday is august 10th Oh, he's dead? Yeah. <laughs> you. Good. Yeah. We're all Leos. Yeah, they So, uh, but he's a few years older than me. But anyway, uh, what was the question? I forgot. As far as, far as um, when it came down oh, to the RVD? With RVD and stuff, passing on oh. some of his, 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 his vibes. And, uh, the, yeah. Like his ways, the ways uh, that uh, he looked at life. Um, all positive. Oh, he's a positive guy. And. It rubbed off on me, rubbed off on me, and I helped him as well. Uh, he come in one night and said, "Damn it, man! This is the second and third time this happened to me." Because <clears throat> he was flying from Los Angeles to Philadelphia, you know, every week, and he'd taken his bag and his shampoo bottle uh, because of, uh, was down under the plane, you know, in storage. Uh, would pop open sometimes Uh, and shampoo would get all over his gear all over uh, his bag uh, he said man i wish i had damn it man i can't my shampoo man i said and damn i got an answer for you i said you take your top off you put a little piece of plastic on and you put the top back on like this and and it it feels insecure and he's he done that and he never leaked again he said i'll never forget those little things (laughs) he told me how to travel and help so if I, you know, one, uh, one hand, hand scratches the other one. But well, people don't understand. It's always the little things that. Yeah, you know, he, he liked me for that. Yeah, thanks, Fonzie. Um, is he a natural? It seems like he's just a natural laid back guy. Is this, is, this yes. is how he is. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very angry, cool guy. Really very good cool guy. You'd love to hang out with him. Yeah, RV, oh, man. I bet I would. <laughs> yeah, I like to hang out with him, too. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Now, question What are some of the. Were you there? Yeah, obviously you were there during the time when Kurt Angle was supposed to come to ECW the very first time. Yeah, what, I was there. What, what was the story behind that when they had, I think, Sandman on the, the crucifix? crucifix? Yes. Yeah. Well, it wasn't much of a story, but it was enough to people talk about it. Uh, it wasn't planned against Kurt Angle or anything. Kurt mm-hmm. Angle was a friend of. Uh, uh, Shane Douglas, they both lived in Pittsburgh and he just come off his national Olympic tour and he's looking to get a job either with Vince or WCW or TNA or wherever the hell you, you know, but he, Shane talked to him to come in and invite him to a show to watch and they did that to uh, Raven and Sandman had that big angle going and they end up, uh, not on purpose to offend anybody, but you know, they had built a cross and put Sandman up there all bloodied up mm-hmm. and the free Kurt Angle out and oh my god, he got mad and it wasn't much He, he actually, I think he threatened if they ever showed a film with him on it. Yeah, it. yeah, well, you know, he can't threaten too much, but he said, yeah, don't put me on a film with that, but he, right, they right. were probably didn't. But you know, he had, he had his rights. Was there ever been a time in ECW that you guys pushed the envelope? I, 
I guess that's kind of. We push the envelope every <laughs> time. <laughs> that that's why I'm laughing. That envelope was pushed, bro. It's like that was the gimmick. We had to push the envelope. That's why we got over. That's why that's, we got right. over. That's why ECW was uh, a success, you know. And it was one of the things I noticed, like ECW. Like, I mean, I grew up. I'll be honest, watching WWF. So if you wasn't part of WWF, I may know you by face, but I didn't really know you by name. Right. But then. For some reason, what I did notice when I used to watch ECW, ECW, no, anybody that ever watched a television program of ECW, they never questioned the fact that if it was real or fake, if it was real or not. They never asked that question for the EC days. It's like, oh no, those guys, what they well, do, what they real. do, what they real. do is real. It was sports entertainment <laughs> of a different caliber, but I mean, when you put somebody through dive off a 30-foot balcony onto a t guy laying on the table, that's as real as it gets, as it brother, gets, yeah. you know? Yeah. They know, uh, I don't like the word fake. Right. Uh, that's an old word. Predetermined. It's, yeah, but, you know, yeah. we are a company. We are a, a sports entertainment. Okay, okay. That's good, that's good. Any... If you if you had a chance to think, I asked you that one time before. If you had a chance to actually do anything over again, what would you have done? Besides making more money. <laughs> uh, it's not about the money, but money sure does help life, you know, go around. Mm -hmm. Anything I would have done different, I would have. Uh... Anybody you really wish you had the chance to get to know before they either left the business or, sadly to say, departed. You know. No, I met pretty much everybody that uh, in 30 years. I met a lot of people from Bobo, Brazil. He was in the Sheik, mm -hmm. uh, not the Iron Sheik. I met him too, but mm -hmm. the, uh, Eddie Forehead, the other Sheik. Mm -hmm. uh, those guys were on their way out when I was on my way in. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I met all the guys through all the different eras, all the different. Uh, from the Barry Windhams to the Dusty Rose to the Barry Windhams to the Shawn Michaels, so all the evolution I was in, I met a lot of guys in 30 years. Well, speaking of Barry Windham, how was Barry Windham? I know Ric Flair always spoke. Barry right. Windham Sp was a hell of a wrestler. Uh -huh. I mean, he could wrestle his ass off, and he was a big star in Florida Championship Wrestling. He was a, a natural. Star. He's what you call a... Oh, yeah. Uh, Him and Jake the Snake Roberts used to have some unbelievable matches, uh -huh. like... Jack Briscoe and Dory Funk used to have these great matches. Uh, so did Barry. So did Barry Windham and Jake the Snake. Barry could work with anybody, uh, but they had unbelievable matches. If you get the boys in the dressing room to peek through the curtain and watch a match, you know, then you, then you got, got some, him. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Ric Flair always spoke highly about him. Said he was when it came down to finding a replacement, he was probably the only one that actually fit like a glove yeah he yeah. was good yeah and any any says now i know you had your times in wwf um how was it with dealing with Shawn michaels like in the locker room was Shawn was okay we Shawn didn't was... hang out a lot okay uh, but you know we were, i was in the dressing room with him every night and i refereed his matches all the time but he was easy to work with mm -hmm. i get along with everybody i'm well liked i did my job i was very good at my job so it was easy for me. I had no problems with anybody. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of guys preferred me to do their matches. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hope Fonzie does my match. Fonzie, would you do my match tonight? Because I was uh, taught and learned so much in my career. And it, uh, so sometimes I would help the wrestlers out during their match. Like, you know what I mean? Hey, do this, do that. Oh, you know, were, so were, they would love me to add to their matches, you know. Did you feel any, were you ever, were any other referees threatened by you as far as what you stealing in their spot? No, but one time, uh, my first time at Madison Square Gardens, I think it might have been for the first Monday Night Raw, uh, I was excited because it was going to be my first night in Madison Square Gardens, and not Raw, but it was going to be my first night in Madison Square Gardens. And so I went in there, and you know, you got to dress nice, but in those days, you could wear the Zubas. Remember the Zuba pants? They're like, uh, 
you know, the sports mm -hmm. pants, mm -hmm. and you wear tennis shoes, and mm -hmm. nice, mm -hmm. and really look athletic, you know, mm -hmm. you can wear that, uh, you know, but Vince wanted you to look good. But so anyway, and I like to dress nice, uh, so I uh, went out and bought a nice suit, beautiful suit. I was making money, I bought a beautiful suit, and looked great, mm -hmm. and I walk in with my nice luggage and beautiful suit, and just so happened, Vince happened to be standing around the ring or something, and, hey, Vince, how you doing? And Vince called me over and said, hey, Fonzie, you look fantastic. You look great, Fonzie. <laughs> I'll never forget this. He said, you look great. And there was uh, four or five other referees, the Hebners, oh, and the other guys. And he said, hey, referees, come over here. Oh, no. So all the referees come over and said, yes, Vince. He said, you see how Fonzie's dressed? That's how I want you to dress from now on. Oh, put you on the spot. <laughs> and I got hit with the boy with other referees because they want to dress semi-casual, upbeat, cat and uh -huh, nice, but uh -huh. you know, now they gotta wear a suit to a big event. Any TVs, any pay-per-views, they gotta dress nice because of me. But that's what they should have done. So what? <laughs> so what? Image is everything. Do what Vincent says, he's paying you big money. There you go. And you should look good. Yeah, image Vincent, is Vincent, hey, if you're a a baby face or a heel, a good guy or a bad guy, and you're in the airport, and the fan comes up to you, recognizes you, and uh, wants an autograph, you stop and you do the autograph. You know, we're characters. Now, you know? I know back in the, speaking about the, as far as autograph, I know back in the 80s, and I, I believe in the 90s, Heels wasn't necessarily exposed to like the fans as far as to do the autograph or for merchandise and stuff like that. The biggest sales were coming from the from the baby faces. Yeah, of course. So, so I mean, but still, if you yeah. were a heel and right, you know, Vince wants you to uh, conduct yourself in your proper professional manner. Right, and then do the right team. thing. Of course, of course, that's the boss. <laughs> that is the boss. Yeah, I mean. Any other now? How about how about as far as Shane Douglas? Shane Douglas was cool. He worked he, his ass off. Okay. Pretty cool guy. Okay. When when he dumped the belt, that was pretty. That was when ECW was taking their first step as far as yeah. the new direction. What was your thoughts on that? Or, uh, are you? It was just another angle. No, no. To me, to me, after coming from Florida and Dusty and all that uh, and being around the world doing wrestling for years it was just another an event for me but you know but uh, I didn't take it as serious as some of the guys did and the only guys who took it to heart and was uh, a little upset about it was like uh, Joe Goodhart or whoever the NWA guy mm -hmm. was or whatever but you know didn't affect me any I thought it was a good angle actually good so any any plans on the future as far as with yourself uh no I'm gonna take it as it comes mm -hmm. I got a beautiful grandson who I love to spend time with and I am looking forward to doing some good? shows like uh, autograph fan fest and stuff like that because I did take some time off mm -hmm. after I got nice and clean and, and, and started enjoying life uh, thank you, Vince, for helping me with that. Uh, no, I, I, but I, I do want to do some shows. I don't want to get back into it full time. I'm almost sixty years old. August eleventh, I'll be sixty. So I'm sure there be, there would be a spot for you if you wanted. They could create a spot. For me. <laughs> In fact, I might write a letter to Vince McMahon and, and uh, thank him and see if there's a spot for me. <laughs> oh, wink wink <laughs> there you go um, oh, that's good that's good another question I wanted to ask you um, alright let's ask the question let's wrap this up because I got a flight to catch it yes sir minutes. the network what's your feeling on the WWE network I love it yeah, yeah. I love it who would have thought 30 years ago that there would be a wrestling network just like uh, when Ted Turner put CNN on 24 hours a day, you know, the, mm -hmm. the 24 hour news, everybody thought he was crazy. They mm -hmm. said, that who, who's going to watch news 24 hours? Now there's 20 news channels 24 hours. So, you know, Vince is ahead of his time. He is a visionary, as they call visionary, it. Visionary, yeah. 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 Well, Mr. Bill Alfonso, thank you.
for this wonderful interview, man. I wish you the best of luck. Thank and you. And hopefully we could do this again. As a matter of fact, I know we'll do it again. Thank you so much. <laughs> it was my pleasure. All right. For and thanks to all the wrestling fans for supporting me and, in, and uh, letting me entertain them for all these years as a referee and as a manager. Really, thank you to the people. <laughs> well, this has been our first episode of Wrestling Life. And we hope you enjoyed our first guest with Bill Alfonso. And uh, we'll see you another time. Later. <laughs>